It was a great honor a year ago to be asked to deliver this lecture tonight, and then, of all things, to have the lecture series named after me. And I could not be more delighted or more impressed than the selection uh, has shown of the next person who is giving this lecture, now named after me, Justice Dana Fabe, who is a person with whom I work as a member of the Conference of Chief Justices, uh, just a, an extraordinary leader who also hosted the other chiefs up in her home state of Alaska. And then to see a panel uh, entitled Women Chief Justices as part of the same program. Now, let me just go down memory lane a little bit here. I won't keep you long on this, but I cannot help but reflect upon the fact that when I went to law school, there were four women in my class. That was all. Although that was a number sufficient to garner the first place in the class to a woman. <laughs> we now have more than a majority of women uh, at our law school. We also have about one-third of the chief justices of the various states and territories are women. We will have upon my successor, a woman taking office, Justice Tani Kantil Sakauwe, a majority of women on the California Supreme Court. This is, would have been unthinkable several years ago. And uh, at that time, and I'll speak generically of the panelists because uh, they will receive a more complete introduction from their moderator, uh, to have that many women engaged in the national administration of justice was something unthinkable, certainly to my longtime friend, uh, Justice Joan Dempsey Klein, the presiding justice of the Court of Appeal, with a senior position on that court, when she was co-founder, uh, founding mother, I think it uh, is the term that's been used, of the National Association of Women Judges and the California Women judges. So it's incredible the progress that has been made. And each of the panelists is a person with whom I've been privileged to work as a member of the Conference of Chief Justices. Each one has done not only an outstanding job in her state, but also in terms of the contributions that were made to the organization of Chief Justices and the National Center for State Courts on a national level. So. That is something that we can be very, very pleased with, and I am thrilled with my uh, successor, whom some of you involved in programs later this week with, with the National Association of Women Judges will have the pleasure of meeting and hearing. So I will just conclude this brief welcome by saying that during my 38 years on the bench, uh, which will come to a close, as Drew has said, on January 2nd, um, I have tried to commit myself and the California judiciary to access to justice, to independence of the judicial branch, and to the rule of law. And I know that each of your following speakers, our guest lecturer, the panel members, and their moderator is equally dedicated to those concepts. And I congratulate them, and I am going to retreat to a back corner because I have to leave for a birthday celebration uh, later and I don't want to disrupt the program but I very much look forward to the lecture that's to follow and I wish you all a wonderful program which is guaranteed with this outstanding panelist. Thank you so much. <laughs>